her. She is actually right by the door. Crew apparently might need to go out. What are you doing now? Here you come. <laughs> <laughs> what can you look at? Absolutely needed to go outside right at this minute. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I am, I'm exhausted. I've been playing in the mud all day. <laughs> no, uh, no washing up at all before the live. Completely covered in mud. What can you do? <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? Good to see you. Richard from Canada, what's up? Robin Lanter. Simply Pam, 13 Moons Homestead, what's up? Frodo Davis. Scott, Ascension Ranch, how's everyone doing tonight? Oh, my goodness. We have been busy cabbing. So much cab going on, it's crazy. Uh, man, we... We got just about, uh, we got four courses of cabin done. It's crazy. Pretty much all, pretty much all the way around. I still got a little bit more to do. I'm in here, but like, I just got just like a little bit left of the hallway. Man. So close. I'll probably, probably end up going out, going out going back out there after this and uh, just finish that off. Well, not in one day. Not quite in one day. Uh, it took two days. Probably windy. Yeah, it's been windy these past two, three days. I don't even remember. It just seems like windy just about every day. It's rough. <laughs> it's rough trying to get things done. And uh, especially with the cab, prepping the cab, you got the dirt blowing around, you got the straw blowing around. Blowing around. It's just crazy. It's a mess. <laughs> Affordable Desert Living, how's it going? Junior, Astronomical Truths. Yeah, but I'm excited. Uh, four courses, that's incredible uh four courses in a couple of days honestly i was not sure if i'd be able to if we'd be able to get all that done but i'll tell you uh kind of crazy yesterday or we were con contacted maybe uh, a little while ago by a couple that were they were going to be in arizona kind of in the tucson area they decided they wanted to kind of come down here kind of check things out, kind of meet us. And when they did that, they were just like, hey, uh, so you're working on some cob, you mind if we jump in? And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they ended up just coming here for a visit. And then, uh, then they helped us put up cob, which was kind of nice because uh, I was ended up doing the mix in. They kind of threw the cob on there, and we got like half of it done that day. And then today, I took over doing the mix in, doing a lot of the applying. Oh, hey, you finally back? Did you miss me? <laughs> I miss you. It's going to be really boring if it's a one person show. No one wants to see me. It's the star of the show. Everybody Actually, see the all your dirt. Yeah, look at this. You can wash your hands. I didn't wash anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what? That's good. It's good for the skin. Okay. It's gonna suck out all the uh, the toxins from the body, and then when I wash it off, it'll wash away all the toxins. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I was telling them about uh, all the cabin I've been doing. 
I mean, obviously they can see it's all over my face. <laughs> uh, talking a little bit about our guests. Yeah, very nice. Now, how's your week been going? Pretty good. What you been doing all week? Uh, how's your leg feeling, by the way? Oh, it's a lot better. Just a huge bruise covering half my leg. <laughs> Just on my shin. So if you caught our last video, we did course number nine of the Earth Egg. Now, this thing is getting tall. How tall is it uh, from the outside? Uh, was it five feet or is it over five? Five feet. Mm. Maybe just a little over five feet. Not the great. It's still pretty wild. Where's crew? Yeah, I just uh, well, I tried to take him for a walk. I thought. There's some kind of emergency. He had to go or something. He just peed a little bit and then he planted himself down in front of the car. So he's still out there. I don't know. I can't believe that. I don't know what's going on. He's crazy sometimes. Do you need scaffolding yet? Well, we don't need scaffolding yet, but it's something we're looking into eventually. Eventually we're going to need something up there when working on the higher, higher levels. Mm -hmm. How much higher do you think you might need before, before, or how much higher do you think we're going to go before you might need something? I think we'll need something soon, because it's already... I was afraid of that. <laughs> like, you you were lifting up cans of dirt to me, and you are like, lifting it over your head. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. That was a workout. I was starting to get a workout. Yeah. Uh, for that whole course, just lifting cans up over my head. But we're still going to have to do that kind of a little bit. How many total courses? Like for the whole dome? What you were thinking might be around 40, right? Yeah, it might be around 40, but we're going up pretty quick, so... Those bags are pretty thick. They're pretty thick. But with the extra height, it might still be 40. I don't know. Well, if we take lots of vitamin C, it'll help with the bruising. Oh, that's good to know. We have vitamin C. Maybe we'll take some extras. Yeah, that was messed up. Uh, you know, like, cause was that the first injury what I did to you? <laughs> was that the first time you got smashed in the leg? Uh, yeah, I think so. So that was my. So the first injury was from me. Um, yeah, having a little trouble getting the slider out. And you were backed up against the form. And then we had to yank it out. I yanked <laughs> it out right into her leg. Smash. I couldn't believe that. I was like, oh no. But oh just... yeah, and then the, the barbed wire. I don't think that was in the video, but it kind of, I lost my grip on it and it kind of whipped into my face. Luckily, it just, it got me by the forehead. Mm -hmm. Not it, like in the eye or something. Yeah, that was crazy. Medlife Price is in here. You know, uh, Medlife Price has got a whole bunch of straw bales today. Oh, uh oh, look out. Mm -hmm. They're coming for them. <laughs> <laughs> we know where they are. <laughs> we know where they are. We're coming for them. <laughs> wow. Everybody's buying land around us. What? Chris, uh, Chris says, today my fiance and I bought land around Sun is Ona. Nice. Yeah, not too far. Not too far. So what have you been up to this past week? Um, I don't know. What, what have I been doing? <laughs> I'll tell you something. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow us on Instagram. But on a side project that I was doing before the cobbing is working on a little bully stick holder for crew. Oh, yeah. So uh, tell them a little bit about, like, why you wanted it. You, you were, like, looking for a bully stick holder for a while. Yeah, well, I was a little worried that he would um, maybe choke on the end of it because he kind of chews it down. And I've seen him swallow some 
pretty long pieces. Uh, so I don't want to or anything. Mm -hmm. He kind of stopped doing that um, as long as I'm fresh. <laughs> and in time, he'll like scoot down to maybe like four or five inches. But that's like half the stick. And those things, you know, they're not cheap. So you want so, to get your money's worth. Yeah. So I thought a, a holder, I saw some on Amazon. They're like these plastic things and it's supposed to hold it like grips it so the dog can chew on it safely um but i'm like well can't we just make something now like i mean you could have got that but you were like but i mean they were crazy expensive right well it might have been like 30 dollars or something well, 30 dollars for a little piece of plastic to hold a bully stick right and you were looking at reviews online they didn't even last that long right yeah so like thirty dollars you're spending, and then you probably gotta keep buying them because they don't hold up. So like, can we make something? Can we make something that's less expensive or last? I said I'd do it. It took me how many weeks to finally work on it? <laughs> it was a while. I was I was like, fine. Uh, like, finally, I gotta do it. So you know, it's just I'm gonna be honest. It's not that fancy. I just uh, took a two by four, drilled a couple holes in it, and then stuck a um, um, fence hook in there. <laughs> but I sanded it off really nice. It was nice and smooth. North Star Prep Stutter, how's it going? But Jess took it and she made it a work of art. How long did it, uh, How long did this take you? Um, so you were super quick. I time myself, but I finished it in one day. Yeah, check this out, y'all. It's beautiful work. Beautiful work. If uh, you've seen us, if you've seen it, if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably already seen it. But this is. Uh, tell me, is that all reversed to you? Does that say work? No, it's <laughs> work. <laughs> That's it's. Right it's it's. Good, I think. It's all right. Okay. Okay. From for me, it's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a pizzle in there. And there's a pizzle in there. Yeah. So I did a wood burning on there. Yeah, fantastic. Uh so she took this uh, you know, this stupid little piece of wood I put in uh, put together and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> turned it into something pretty cool and uh what do you think how do you think he likes it and how do you think it's working he took to it right away as soon as he saw it <laughs> and he was using it and i think he likes it yeah and considering it's made out of wood and metal it should hold up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-eight degrees in Michigan. Heat wave. Did we even get up to sixty-eight degrees here? I think we got close to well, it's maybe around seventy today. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. She did that like, look at he spit. <laughs> Ranch and Ranch says, Jim, is your mom going to be out soon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, I was going to put something about that, about my uh, my visit with my mom in the last video. I didn't talk too much about it. But I think she kind of ended up falling through the cracks with uh, insurance and everything like that. They just... Um, they said she wasn't making the progress that she should. And then they kind of labeled that as her new normal. Like not being able to walk. So she's in this facility right now. And it's they're really it's really just they're really just kind of looking after. Her. Yeah, they uh they kind of take care of her a little bit. Uh they kind of feed her. Um 
help her out with a like her taking a tester for blood sugar and stuff like that but she really needs like physical therapy because she, she still can't get out by herself or do anything like that and this facility isn't like equipped to kind of like help her get out of bed and stuff like that so uh until unless we can unless we can somehow get her some more help yeah it's gonna be rough for her trying to get out of bed you know uh my brother my brother doesn't he's not too far from her so he tries to work with her a little bit whenever he gets over there but i'm hoping she'll be able to get out of bed again Beautiful couple will check in to see how you're doing. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. So can she be at home and have visiting therapy and home health care? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That might be a lot. That might be a lot to to put on my like. She could probably maybe be in bed in my brother's house, but I don't know. Uh, would that work? You think some kind of like home health care thing? Well, or does she need? She might need quite a bit of attention. Maybe like if there's a visiting nurse or something, you know, hmm. maybe they could look into that. Well, they get a they get a nurse visit there like once a week at this this facility. Can you give a brief rundown on your solar setup? You know, power rating or output and costs. Uh the cost was man. The cost was about fourteen thousand dollars. Um. We have 15 320 watt panels. Uh, all of our all of our equipment is. Um, oh man, forget the name, forget the brand, but um, we got a couple of inverters. Uh, we can store. We have four uh, Model S Tesla batteries that we use for uh, power storage, which gives us about. Um, uh, 20 kilowatt hours worth of storage. Um, with the two inverters, I'd say we can have we can use about 7,000 watts. Hi, different. Hello. Nice to see you guys. Uh, amazing toilets you guys built, by the way. <laughs> Very creative. All without reading the uh, the human newer handbook. You just they just thought of that up. Yeah. yeah. I had to read the book. <laughs> um, so with the two inverters, we can have about 7,000 running watts, and I think up to about 12,000 burst watts. So it's really more power than we even need. We, we since it's just the, since it just became the two of us, have we, uh, have we ever had any power issues? Except on like, if there's been like cl cloudy days in a row. Yeah, if we have multiple cloudy days in a row, we usually try to be more conservative with our power use, but we've never like run out. Mm -hmm. Cindy asks, would earth bags work in Oklahoma with high humidity? Yes. Yeah, I think earth bags can work in wetter climates. Usually, I mean, they're used a lot in dry climates, but um, I mean, earthen building has been used all around the world mm -hmm. throughout history. So I don't know if there's a lot of resources for like what climate earth bag building though. Have you come across anything? No, that's uh, it's mainly your resources are mainly for dry yeah. climates, but I don't think I've seen too much for wetter climates. But I know like, I mean, there's cob houses in Europe hmm. and you know other wet climates so I think it can work it's just 
you probably have to do it differently than we're doing it. It's all, yeah, it's all just prepping for the climate. And if you have more water, then, you know, you want to get everything up off the ground a bit. And large roof domes usually get on, not built for like wetter climates, unfortunately. How old is the solar system? Have you noticed any drop off in performance with age? Oh, no, we've only had we've only had this for a few years. So I, I would hope there hasn't been any uh, drop off in, uh, in uh, efficiency. I would think that would be a while, I would hope. <laughs> but so far it's been running pretty good. I haven't noticed. Everything's been running tip top. In fact, do you remember like maybe even for a year? I was always looking at that, wasn't I? <laughs> yes. I was always out there just kind of monitoring the uh, the charge controller, seeing what the batteries were at. Yeah, and kept running out and checking. So, see what, how's everything going? But that's probably good. It got you pretty well familiar with that and with our power usage. And I had to go into the system several times to kind of check on things. Usually uh, when things really start hitting up at the beginning of summer, things will kind of shut down. We'll get some errors. And that'll happen maybe a couple of times at the beginning of summer. I'm expecting it again this summer. We'll see. Uh, but it eventually just corrects itself, starts running, and then it'll, it'll be fine. Then it'll be fine for the rest of the summer. But uh, but I I am so familiar with how the system. <laughs> like I know like if there's going to be cloudy days, I know <laughs> like how much we, we can use and. Uh, <laughs> you know what we can't use if we gotta shut things down. I know exactly what's gonna happen with the batteries. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> oh, Junior says someone built an earth bag house in Canada. Oh, west side somewhere. On the west side. <laughs> oh, Prices say they get low voltage warnings in the winter. You know, I don't think we have any problems in the winter, right? It's more like the summer if we got a lot of things running in. That's when we'll get, have to be a little bit more careful. Mm. Duke, what's up? <laughs> Pam asked me every morning if she can reheat her coffee in the microwave. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, and you guys have run on six panels now. I bet you can't, or wait, is it? Yeah. And I bet you can't, just can't wait to hook up the rest. But uh, that is one thing I'm glad. I'm glad we got all of our panels hooked up that way. That way you don't, that way you don't have to ask me when you're ready to heat up your tea or something like that. <laughs> Would you be interested in starter trays for plants? I wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so anxious to get more plants growing. Kind of holding back because we're working on the house. I'm holding her back. <laughs> Stop with it. Need some good like growing space, but yeah, I'm really eager. Regina asks, what type of earth bags are you using? um just uh misprinted green bags yeah so they're they're woven polypropylene bags just single bags and got them from a packaging company they're misprinted so uh, i think 20 20 to 25 cents per bag even the small even our smaller bags are kind of large aren't they and they what do they tamp down to i think they don't they tamp down to about 18 inches? I think so. Yeah. But these these uh these other ones that we're building for the house are massive. They're like they're like about 24 inches wide, but when they tamp down, they tamp down, they fill and then tamp to about 20. All together, there's so much dirt to take to fill those things. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, you just looked at that company recently again, and it sounds like they are now selling bags specifically <laughs> for building, right? Like unprinted bags. You did. They ran out of uh, misprinted bags, and they just started selling uh, regular bags to people that want to build houses. <laughs> <sighs> Where's our cut? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. What internet do you use? Just, uh, use our phones. Yeah, just our phones. We're on the Verizon network. Yeah. And then we just uh, use our, our mobile hotspot for internet. Yep. And we did get a booster. But, uh, yeah, just the mobile data works. Uh, it's been working really well for us. I haven't had any issues really, right? Yeah. What do you think about that Starlink? Are we going to get that? Um, I don't know. I mean, what we have is seems to be working fine. And yeah, it's, who needs an extra bill, right? Right. I mean, it's you can't inexpensive. complain about what we're uh, what we're paying right. for phones and internet and everything like that. Probably about the cheapest thing I've ever seen. Maybe it's, there's some cheaper, but. Alan asks, do you guys recommend to build with earth bags in the Caribbean? You probably could. Depending on the soil yeah. and of course extra precautions and stuff like that. Uh, you know, but I'd say experiment, you know, with a, you know, play around with and read on different types of uh, natural building methods. Mm -hmm. Some, some are better than others. Yeah. So I guess depending on like your local resources too. Mm -hmm. So for us, earth bags make sense because we can use the soil here. The soil is really good for building and we don't have, you know, a lot of trees, a lot of lumber around here. So we wanted to use that. Mm -hmm. In the wetter climates, I noticed they use a different material for the outside. Yeah, you probably would need to. So we can probably get away with uh, more of an earthen plaster. Uh, we don't have to worry about that all like washing away mm -hmm. right away. But um, yeah, for water climates, I mean, you might need like a different roof to protect all the walls and the earth. I mean, you still want your walls to be breathable. So something to think about but waterproof it probably no domes in wetter climates our north star prep center asks if we're going to keep the sides of our house scalloped we fill it in to make it smooth we'll definitely smooth it out uh right now i'm just kind of throwing on a kind of a thinner coat just to kind of get things covered right now we really want to, the goal is to mainly protect it from the uv right mm -hmm. so i might do a little bit more cabin just to kind of fill things out smooth it out yeah or whatnot uh what do you think about the um the long straw and how that sticks out does that bother you do you like that as an aesthetic um i'm okay with it so you don't you don't and that's they're they're looking for a super smooth easy. dome. Well, it depends on what we end up going with for like the overall aesthetic, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe add rocks. Are you still thinking about adding rocks to the outside? Yeah. Oh, you are. Okay. I like rocks. <laughs> well, <laughs> we got them. Do you? Because we got it. We got enough. We got enough. <laughs> and can I paint the rocks? I'm not gonna tell you no. <laughs> Would driving rebar into the bags be stronger and easier than barbed wire? I wouldn't recommend it. No, there might be circumstances where you want to put rebar in. That's something we did for our cistern. I uh, wanted that extra strength in there. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I think some joints you might want to throw some rebar in there. But I would not do it instead of barbed wire, especially if it's going to be like a house. Yeah. You definitely want that barbed wire in there. The thing about barbed wire is you got 
a long continuous string of it going all the way around and got the barbs, you know, digging into the soil mm. too. So it helps with the tensile strength all the way around and every single row. And, you know, the, I don't know if there's an issue with the bar, with the rebar, like piercing through a bag to. That's what I, exactly what I was going to get at. The thing is like, once you tamp the bags, you have your solid brick. As soon as you start smashing rebar into there, I kind of wonder about it's like compression strength. Mm -hmm. Or tensile strength because the plastic bag too helps. It makes it a little more stretchy. But I think in certain circumstances, rebar would probably be good, like in weaker areas of the wall, maybe. Mm -hmm. Time-wise, how long does one layer take you to do in that ass? Right now, it takes a while to do one of these courses. When, uh, you know, just recently I had my brother out here helping. He came down. And with the extra help, we were able to kind of finish, all, almost finish that course in a day. We had a couple more bags to finish up. But do you think as it is right now until we get higher up on the dome do you think we can even finish a course in one day mm -mm. well yeah i'd say it takes at least an hour or no, no. <laughs> eight hours for, for what for filling a bag per I'd bag eight hours <laughs> uh say. well it's got to be longer than that uh because just if, if we could do filling them. if we could do eight hours, then we'd have that knocked out in a day. Yeah, but then there's I don't know. There's like the things we got to do to prepare for it, and the barbed wire takes a little time. Barbed um, wire probably takes how long does it take to do a barbed wire? An hour? Usually take breaks for eating and things like that. <laughs> We take breaks after every bag. We do a bag, no, take an don't. hour break, do another bag, <laughs> take an hour break. <laughs> you don't want to burn yourself out. Whoa. Chilly down there today. No, it wasn't. It was decently warm. It was cold in the morning. Yeah, I was cold in the morning. And it was windy. I, I was... like it when it's chilly and windy. Yeah. How's the rain guttering guttering rebuild going? You ready to collect rain? Not yet. Not yet. So Let's many things oh, <laughs> no. so many things going on. Didn't you give me well yeah, I had another task you gave me. I gotta get on. Oh. And then uh and then there was one today, right? You gave me another task. I totally forgot what that is. I spaced it out. Uh oh, I think I forgot too. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I'm getting behind, I'm getting behind. Me too. Did you figure out your system or collaborate with a pro for solar setup? Uh, yeah, I kind of collaborate. <laughs> uh, we worked with uh, Derek Candyman Howlett. He helped us out uh, quite a bit. I kind of looked to his design and his setup, and I kind of modeled what we did after his. Uh, which is pretty similar, except uh, different batteries, uh, dual inverter. And then uh, I got all like the panels hooked up. I did all the wiring for the panels, got all the wiring run into the shed. And then he came down and helped out with the rest and helped hook everything else up. Then he got everything running. And then, uh, and then I did all the wiring to get the trailer set up. So, uh, yeah, he was a big help. Mm -hmm. Very generous. Sure. <laughs> AZ Gary asks, why do you need the dual inverter? Well, we probably don't need the dual inverter. We got the two inverters because at the time we had more people out here. So there's yeah. a good chance we'd have a larger draw. My my aunt was here. She had her RV. And my brother was here uh, living with us for a while too. 
So we were thinking like, well, possibly like three different kind of households or something. Damn, I don't know what's better to how doing it. <laughs> uh, well, we did have a video. We did a video not too long ago where, yeah, uh, actually, we showed we showed. I actually the end product, I guess. Yeah, I actually <laughs> held <laughs> the aftermath, uh, the bre the breakdown in my hands in the thumbnail. If you go look at our at uh, some of our older videos, it's not it's not that old. And actually show you what the what the compost look yeah. like after it's been sitting for a year. I think that was probably from the summer. It so yeah, not even called a year it ago. something like this used to be our poop. <laughs> <laughs> Check that video out. We have we actually have something where they where we show that what that breaks down. I don't know if if you're really interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Duke asked, "How much land did you get in Arizona, and what's the ballpark cost for the land?" Uh, we have 40 acres. We have 40 acres. And it was a little over 15,000 at that time, which I have not really seen land of uh, that good of a price. Now, I've heard people even getting some better deals than that, Maybe. but but not many. And I, I you know, I know this realtor he said that finding land in this area especially for a real a good deal like that is they're few and far between you know uh, they're, they're people are buying up land and prices are going up yeah it's crazy also how does gardening out there work um well it's tricky we said got about a a decent year where we where you kind of focused on the garden, right? Yeah, and that was a good year for gardening because we got a lot of rain. Um, the problem is out here. Well, it's it can be very dry some years, so you need a way to protect the plants and hold in the moisture. And it's windy too, and the wind drives things out. Um, also. Since there's not a whole lot of natural vegetation, when you start growing a lush garden, uh, it attracts a lot of wildlife and they just want to eat it all up. So you need extra protection. So the, the UV is incredibly challenging. We actually built a whole structure to protect the garden and uh, we put shade cloth up over the top and over like the west side to kind of protect the plants from getting scorched and too hot. It is, and I think the temperature swings are terrible. Like um, might be a little easier in like more moderate climates, but those temperature swings are definitely something that you have to account for. So as much as we can moderate those temperatures, that'll be a boom. And we got ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Simon Ashby said, congrats on the 30K. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Cliff is, uh, have you considered wind turbines? Um, I, I'm not considering wind turbines anytime soon for like power production. But uh, I think, but you, you were thinking about windmills at some point. I, at one point, I looked at how you might be able to build a windmill. Um, Would you build a turbine for, for powering something? I don't know. What about just... Um, thank you, Simon. Well, thank you very much for that. Simon says, a long time follower of you guys. <clears throat> you decided on the materials for your gutter problem yet? 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll probably just, you know, I'll just go back to the Illuminati plan. I think I know it's kind of like what the issue was and why they kind of loosened up like that, why they started leaking so much. So I have a complete redesign in mind, kind of involving aluminum gutters and and a lot of PVC piping. <laughs> Yeah, that roof uh, that we clicked rain off of is quite large, so there's a lot of water that comes off of there. Mm -hmm. We've got to find a way to get that to drain as quickly as we can. I'll have that hooked up pretty soon. I'm working on it. I'm kind of working on it in between things. But today was all about the cab. <laughs> Got my own mud mask today. <laughs> your, your beauty treatment. Chris still okay out there? Uh, let me check. <laughs> there's no there's, there's no crew cam because crew's just laying outside. That's where I wanted to be. It's okay. It's... Well, he would let you know if he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it's getting dark out there, and I. Staring he's... at the sunset. Oh, he's enjoying <laughs> the sunset. Hey, how did Kit Kat? How did you design it and make the blueprint? Oh. <laughs> Just showing off my mud arm. Oh, you woke him up. Now he's like, no, now he's like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing outside for? I want to be up on my bed. Um, our house design, we kind of, we went through a bunch of different now. designs over the course of like years. Um, we finally settled on one. I think it was kind of a process of simplifying because it started out a lot more complex and then we had to learn more about earth bag building. We were kind of figuring out what would work for that type of building and what would work for us and our situation and what we needed. So yeah, we designed it all ourselves. Yeah. I'm crazy like that. <laughs> Hundred eighty degrees from average. Hello, how are you guys doing tonight? He's checking for <laughs> food. Check Is there food in there? Ah! Hey, buddy. It's like in the mud off my arm. <laughs> there huh you get cold oh, I feel the oh, wind's finally calmed down eh been having that those just yeah those past couple of days I'd say winds around 25 miles an hour <whistles> telling you I don't know how much dirt and straw I got in my eyes the past couple of days <laughs> oh you do oh See, look at that. I don't even have to take a shower tonight. Crew's going to lick all the mud off me. <laughs> Is it safe for him to be licking all the mud off my arms? Is he going to get something from that? Who knows? Are the summer nights cold where you are? Uh, cool. Nice and cool. Perfect sleeping weather. The daytime temps can be like over 100 sometimes during the summer, but then uh, at night they'll be like around 70. Just open up the windows and it's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, it's really nice. Nice. Oh. Uh, but of course, it's the exact opposite in the winter. You bundle up in at night in the winter and then, uh, <laughs> and then beautiful days, beautiful daytime temps. How is your satellite internet provider in your area? Is it slow? We couldn't even get satellite internet right here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, it was that light, like line of sight yeah. satellite, and, and uh, they're like, uh, you can kind of get a signal, but he's like, in good conscience, I can't. Uh, I can't hook you up with this because yeah, it's, uh, it's honestly going to be really bad. So I appreciate the honesty of the guy. You know, he really tried to get that. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have brought him in. Um, <laughs> gotta get up, gotta get up on the bed. <laughs> Hundred eighty degrees from average, from average ass. What are the temps like there right now? You want your pizzle? Today it got probably up around seventy, right? But this morning we will kind of woke up to eh, it was about forty degrees in the morning. Oh, oh, you want your pizzle? Want your pizzle? Want your mom? <laughs> you guys gotta hang on. I guess he's tired of looking. Doesn't want that. Bad. He's just cranky. He needs to go to sleep now. You need to go to sleep. <laughs> Loretta asks, oh. is it an optical illusion or are the arches not high enough? Are they supposed to be above the doors and the half circle domes look chest high? Yeah, those are for the windows. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so we have... We have one of the arches above the doorway, so that's going to be an arch doorway, mm -hmm. and then the other smaller ones are windows. So. so the door, the entrance into the dome will be like eight feet high, and the window, the bottom of the um, the two by four window is at least three feet. Um, from the height of the floor, right? Yeah. So we're you know we're small people. That's perfect for us. <laughs> and then the all, all the form actually all the forms sit on that right three foot three feet high that three foot level. Mm -hmm. So uh, but the other two arch forms will just kind of be bottle windows. So they'll kind of let let in a little light from that, and we'll have like more uh, options, more bottle windows as we go higher, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll be kind of like light sources going all the way up. There'll be more window. There'll be more like areas for light. Yeah. But we kind of opted to err on the side of having more solid walls than a lot of windows just to kind of keep a lot of that thermal mass in place round window work in an arch bag home that's a good question I would. and yeah i was actually thinking about that for higher up in the wall um and if you can find something that you can use i don't know like maybe part of a steel barrel or something something that can hold that shape while you're building and then you can keep it in there yeah, uh, round windows might actually be better, like easier to deal with if you can, you know, just, well, you you know, you'd have some type of round form while you're working, but they'd probably be easier than square, really. Mm -hmm. what, kind of, what kind of music do you like? I listen to... Almost anything. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have too many issues with. Uh, I listen to almost anything, but I usually don't listen to too much music. I think I had uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack playing not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good soundtrack. It's a good soundtrack. What a like oldies. Um. Thing. But uh, usually I listen to audiobooks. Which is kind of well, audiobooks or podcasts when I'm working, which might be boring, but <laughs> that's where I get that's where I get a lot of my reading in. Uh, that's kind of what I listen to for the most part. Hundred eighty degrees, hundred eighty degrees from average. Asked, how much water storage have you created now? <sighs> have we created? 
Uh, well, uh, with the cistern, it's almost 14,000 gallons. And we have two poly tanks. Yeah, a couple of IBC totes. A couple of IBC totes. That's about 500 gallons. We got some small IBC totes that we need to hook up again. I really want to get more water storage going to it too, so. We'll keep building. We'll yeah. Easy Green Mom said, I thought I saw in one of your videos that you planted comfrey. How does that grow here? Um, it's been doing really, it did really well, right? Yeah. Um, so that one year that we got a lot of rain, it just exploded. It was big, amazing. Um, and this past year it didn't do that great, but it's still, I mean, it's hardy. It hung in there. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's growing now and we're getting temperatures below freezing still, but it's kind of, it's coming back now. That's amazing. I can't wait to start growing more of that. I think that'll be a really nice, uh, really nice to grow out here. How did you design your homestead? Uh, well, both of us took uh, permaculture design courses. Yeah, that helps so much. It really, I think, I mean, you don't have to do that, but I think it, it, it really helps to kind of lay things out, give you a good idea of how to do things a little bit more efficiently, um, get things working together so it's not as much uh, work just really gets you thinking kind of ahead of the game on so, uh, so many different things. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be making any raised beds? Yeah, I think we will. I think we'll do a combination of different things. Um, so right now we have some sunken beds, which work pretty well. It helps to hold moisture in. Uh, but I think in some areas, we'll probably have some raised beds. I'm actually, I actually have some plans on creating something like that soon. I really want to work on that. <laughs> Red Light Price says somebody's thirsty. I can hear that. I can hear that all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not. Uh, he's not shy when it comes to food or water, is he? <laughs> nope. He knows. What is your USDA zone there? Eight A. Which is fairly high, not nearly as much as because uh, when we lived in Central Arizona, that was yeah, that's like nine. That was nine. But it gets it's cold. It gets cold here in the uh, in the winter for sure. Hello, uh, hello, life at six thousand feet. They said, uh, "Have you thought about creating a solar water heater?" That is, that is something we were kind of thinking of at one point, right? Yeah, we might do something like that. Mm -hmm. We haven't ruled it out for sure. Backcountry preps, how's it going? Do you take visitors? Well, we just had us uh, occasionally. You know, we have people out. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, some pe people uh, had us over to uh, visit, you know, when we were looking to move off grid. And, you know, we like to return the favor and people are thinking about that kind of lifestyle, you know. Like to show people what we're doing. And I think sometimes uh, you can watch videos and stuff like that, but see, sometimes just seeing those things in person really makes it huge difference oh i thought he was gonna settle down he's having trouble tonight <laughs> have you checked out some new youtubers called tiny shiny yes you know them yeah they uh they don't live uh too far from us a little a little north yeah they're doing hyper adobe right now <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> they'll ask
us? How do you get your mail? Um, we have a P.O. box, so we have to actually go to the post office mm -hmm. to pick up our mail because they don't deliver here. But we do get UPS and FedEx, so. But because they don't deliver mail here, they were able to give us a free P.O. box, which was nice. That came in. Whoa, that came in handy. <laughs> but at least it's not too bad of a drive to get down there. It's just a uh, just a few miles away, and it's kind of on our way if we are going out. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so we're getting down, getting down to it. Uh, any last questions? Any last questions people want to throw out there? But otherwise, uh, what can uh, what can we expect in the next video? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hype it up. I like, what have we been doing? <laughs> yeah, you get to see some cob. Four courses. What else? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, the pit, the pit, the boy stick holder. Boy stick. <laughs> She doesn't know. She hasn't gone through the uh, the footage yet. She hasn't. She doesn't know what's been going on. <laughs> uh, but crazy exciting. The next video. Four courses of cob. Unbelievable. We get some visitors. They come out and help us. They're not in the video. We didn't get any footage, video footage of that. But they did. Uh, they worked really hard when they were out here. They just came to visit, and then we put them to work. <laughs> it's crazy. I think they wanted to work. That was a big help. Do we have any more questions? Mm. Any last questions? Get them in. Get them while they're hot. So next video should be out Saturday, right? Be knocking that out. Very excited about that. Uh, nothing? You ending it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you could talk about what you've been doing. She says end it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Uh, I guess that's it for the questions. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us on these Thursday nights. Love getting to connect with you guys, kind of a little bit more personable level than the videos. But other than that, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much to the moderators. We really appreciate it. And uh, Saturday's video should be out sometime in the afternoon. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Yeah, good night.